Hi, I'm Wayne Scrabb of Lone Wolf Hot Rods. Welcome back to our Garage Hack series. This is the second installment. And like the first, everything that we do here is simple, doesn't use any exotic tools, it's everything that you can do in the garage by yourself. Some of this stuff might surprise you, some of it might not. But check it out. The first garage hack for this episode is on making a square cut on tubing. Since I don't have a lathe in my little workshop, I use a hack. Now we've all heard of the trick of using a hose clamp as a cutting guide for a hacksaw. It works sometimes. Most of the time though, the cut is crooked. You can use a cutoff wheel on an angle grinder to slice the tubing, but again the results vary. What's the fix? I have a cheap and easy solution that uses tools everyone should have in the shop. I square and finish the ends of tubing by chucking it in a half inch electric drill. You can hand hold or clamp it in a vise. Either way works. How I do it is to lock the drill at medium speed and use several files, starting with either a bastard cut or second cut file, and then working my way up through a couple of different fine files and eventually finishing up with a sanding block. Clamping the drill in the vise works really well. By doing it this way, you can truly really concentrate on getting a square edge instead of juggling the drill on the file. And again, finishing the cut with a sanding block works wonderfully. One rule of caution though, be sure you have enough room on the cut to compensate for any mistakes. I'm pretty sure you'll dig the process once you give it a try. Next up is drilling around holes. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but it really is. If you start with a pilot hole and work your way up in drill sizes, chances are pretty good the hole will be oval by the time you're done. There is a better way. I'm using Sintra board here. It's what I use for making things like mounting ignition components, uh, small electronics and so on. I'll be using it here just to give you an easy an example. It's easy to cut. The process I use works for everything from plastic to aluminum to sheet metal. To start, I tape over where I want to drill the hole. Then I mark the spot and use a center punch to index the drill. At this point, I drill a small pilot hole, drilling right through the tape. I step up the quarter inch or 5 16 hole next. To finish the hole, I use a step drill bit. The one I'm using is from Klein Tool. They're more costly than some of the others, but wow, do they ever do a nice job. Once you peel the tape off, as shown in the slideshow, you can see for yourself. Bingo, a perfect round hole, and as a bonus, there's little or no flash to the burr either. On old cars, you'll have to deal with rust. No secret to anyone out there, I'm sure. I decided to experiment with two different methods to remove rust, and what I find might totally shock you. I tested a commercial rust removal from a company called Evaporust and pitted it against, are you ready? Molasses. Evaporust is safe to use and is biodegradable. It's non-toxic, non-corrosive, non-flammable, and contains no acids, alkalis, or petroleum solvents. Once a component is soaked in evaporust, it should be rinsed and then re-dipped in the evaporust solution for a second or two. This will prevent flash rust. Evaporust will, will not harm untreated steel and it won't harm brass, aluminum, galvanized metal, copper, rubber, plastic, vinyl, or viton, which, for example, are the needle and seat assemblies used in many carbs. In fact, most painted surfaces remain painted after immersion in evaporust. Fair enough, but molasses is environmentally friendly too, obviously. You can eat it. It's biodegradable, non-toxic, but does it work? For the test, I poured the evaporust into an ice cream bucket per the instructions on the container. I poured a pint of molasses into a matching plastic ice cream bucket. Then I added another pint of hot water into the molasses mix and stirred it. For the test, I tossed a heavily corroded motor mount and a bunch of heavily corroded bolts and fasteners into each pail. I tried mix, both mixes for 24 hours. The evaporust was working, but there was no appreciable, appreciable change with the molasses. Then I tried it for a week, same thing. The evaporust had done the job. The molasses wasn't working. But I decided to leave the part soaking in molasses for a month, just to see if I was missing something. Boy, was I. Given 30 days or so in the ice cream pail, the molasses stripped the corrosion cleanly. In fact, I think it did a far better job than the evaporust. The first three motor mount photos of the photos are after it came out of the evaporust. The second trio of motor mount photos are after it came out of the molasses. The last motor mount, motor mount photos are a direct comparison. Evaporust versus molasses. Molasses mount on the left, on the left evaporust mount on the right. The final uh, photos are of bolts and hardware taken out of the molasses and rinsed. From my perspective, if you have time, molasses wins every time. By the way, you can buy huge quantities, and relatively cheap, at a livestock feed store. They sell it in two or three gallon pails. It's my go-to rust remover. One of my bet, uh, big pet peeves is the big hose clamp that has to regularly be used to mount a tachometer. Here you have a three or four hundred dollar tack installed with a two dollar hose clamp, and it, and it looks like it too. 
Worse, you usually have to slice a piece of rubber to fit in order to insulate the clamp from the steering column. A lot of folks cut up a bicycle inner tube and use it for the cushion. I think a better fix is to open up the clamp and cover it with shrink, uh, shrink sleeve material. What I use is 3 8 inch bulk shrink uh, tubing and cut it to length. Simply heat the size with a heat gun and presto. You end up with what I think is a pretty nice looking clamp. Plus you don't need an inner tube to line it either. And by the way, if the hose clamp is too big, and they always are, it's easy to cut the tail to length with a set of sharp tin snips. Then you just have to finish it uh, at the end of it, at least, on a bench grinder. It works for me. Well, pain in the ass has to be a stuck brick drum adjuster. I ran into three of them on one car recently. As near as I can tell, all of them were caused by a complete lack of lubricant on the adjuster. The solution was pretty simple. I tried some other tricks, but nothing worked, so I resorted to this. I bought some fresh cut-off wheels and went to town on it. As you can see, the cuts went pretty well. A couple of uh, slices, one on top, one on the bottom. Let's uh, let the video roll and uh, you can check out the progress. You'll be surprised how fast it is. If you're a regular lone wolf like me without any help in the shop, tightening some fasteners can be a pain. Yes, I can ask my wife to help, but if she's not home, I'm alone except for Teddy the shop dog. A good example are the Phillips fasteners I use to hold a heater delete plate in place. What I do here is to cover the face of the screw with paint or masking tape and then go inside and tighten the nut. It might take a few tries before you get it tight, but I found it always works. You can also use it for bigger fasteners too. If that's the case, I tape a wrench to the fastener and jam it against something adjacent. Here, I used it to tighten an AN bulkhead fitting. The wrench jammed against the wiper motor, and I was good to go, tightening the bulkhead nut on the passenger side of the firewall. Came out real well. The last hack is a bonus, number seven. I absolutely hate sheet metal screws poking out in the engine compartment. The factory used them a lot, too. I know if there's one that's within a few feet of where I'm working, I'll somehow get stabbed by it. My fix is simple. I get these hose caps from Holly and thread them over the exposed sheet metal screws. No more open wounds and no more need for band-aids or stitches. Your skin will thank you. Stay tuned to Lone Wolf Hot Rods for more hacks and tips. As I gather them up, I'll present them. As I, All I ask is that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's free and subscribers are what makes all of this possible. Thanks for watching.